right, so we're going to look at a cube made out of resistors, or made out of wire or something like that. Um, but each, all right, so this is an empty cube. These are just, these are just wires. And um, each one of them has a resistance of small r. And what we're finding is the resistance from uh, along a body diagonal of this cube. So say from this top front corner to the back uh, bottom corner down here. Okay. So um, again, each of these uh, wires has the same resistance. And so that's going to help us. Um, one way to do this would be to just imagine a current flowing from A to B, and then uh, you can uh, just calculate uh, the voltage drop or something across these different wires. I'm going to draw sort of a different picture here, though, and we're going to just kind of use symmetry arguments, if, if you can call them that. All right, so here I'll put a, a point A. And I'm going to draw three uh, resistors. All right, so this would be these three um, edges of this cube right here. All right, and then over here on this side, we have point B. And then it also has these three edges, so this one this one and this one. All right. In between, we have kind of a weird arrangement. I'm going to go ahead and draw little squigglies on here to represent sort of the resistors. Okay. All right. So each of these, so if, if you now move from point A down to this one, there are two connections at each of these corners and they connect to two of the ones from point B. So I'm just going to draw that this way. Okay? Like this. So here's here's one and then um, I'll draw one like this. Okay? So now uh, this one and this one are done. They each have two uh, resistors connected to them. Alright, now this one's done too, and now we need, um, there's the last one's the weird one, because I'm going to draw it as kind of a dotted line, well, not dotted, but with little breaks in it, because I'm drawing that behind all of these other ones, okay? And I'll, I'll just put that resistor right here. Okay, so there's one that goes behind these others, all right? And basically, just based off of a, off of a symmetry argument, suppose we were to, and I don't know if this actually is technically a symmetry argument or not, but suppose we were to cut this in, in two, um, basically, yeah, 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 so based on the symmetry of the problem, um, we know that these all look the same, right? Uh, so they should all have the same values, and these should all have the same values. And if we were to cut these, um, you wouldn't know from this side which ones were connected over here. Um, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell from one side or the other which ones were actually connected, because uh, no matter which one you look at, you all get the same values due to symmetry. So same values, like if you were to measure the resistance or uh, the voltage drop for a given current or whatever. All right, so I'm going to redraw this, um, taking advantage of the, the symmetry, since they, they don't know which ones they're actually connected to. You know, I'm going to cut them and shift them a little bit. That way we get rid of this weird loop, okay? so. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that 
out in a more rectangular um, format, right? So here's A, right? And we have a resistor. All right, these are these three resistors. And here's B. Okay. And again, um, they each see two resistors. Right, so we're, we're using symmetry to basically cut and reposition these. So they still see the same resistance, they still see two resistors. The only difference is which one, uh, which one of these, you know, if you're coming from this side, these would cross over in, a, in this cyclical way here in the middle. But again, because all the resistor values are equal, um, that doesn't matter. So now we have an equivalent circuit here. So we had 12 sides to this cube, um, and now we have one, two, three here, three here, and six in the middle. So we, we still have our 12 resistors here. All right, and each one of these has a resistance of R. So um, if we go ahead and just look at this piece, you know, one of these little branches right in here, we know, um, I'm gonna use uh, R prime uh, for the total resistance of this inner branch thing. And that's just one over R plus one over R, all right? Um, which equals two over R. And when we, when we flip it, we get half of the resistance of one of these resistors. So now, when we draw this, um, I'll just draw it like this. Here's B, here's A. Uh, we have we've reduced it down to nine. So the ones in this section will have resistance R. Those are our original resistors from right here. The ones in this section we've reduced down, and these have resistance R over 2. Whether it's a 2, I don't know. And then these ones also have resistance R. Okay, so now let's uh, combine these three. These ones are in series, so we just have... Um, go ahead and write a circle on it. R plus R over 2 plus R, all right? So this is equal to 5 halves R, all right? So now we go again, and we have now reduce this down to three resistors, each of which A resistance of 5 halves R. Okay, so now we're going for the final answer. These are all in parallel, so we will add them in parallel. Um, so 5 halves R on the bottom will be a 5R on the bottom and a 2 on the top. And then there will be three of these, 1, 2, 3. And so rather than write this out, I'm just going to multiply by 3. All right, so this is equal to six over five little r. Now we can just invert this and write it up here nice and big. We have our final equivalent resistance equal to five over six times little r. So this is a resistance from point A to point B along the body diagonal of this cube. 